Whoa, whoa, whoa. Huh? That? What's up guys, how are you all doing? Today I'm gonna show you how to make a high voltage from a small combination of batteries or small voltage. For watching the full video, don't forget to share, subscribe and write anything comments down below because I really need it guys. But before that I explained it uh, in my last videos uh, about generating high voltage just like that but I mainly used it from drawing from the main outlet but now my aim is to create this from a really small voltage but how to do how do i do that is the main question well since i asked that myself that question that very question i've been scouring the internet watching videos watching the circuit schematics and many others in or even and even watching other youtubers out there and i finally found one circuit that is best suitable for this task okay now the circuit that you see before you is the best circuit design that I've seen yet and it consists of one transistor, one diode, one resistor, two inductors and or third inductor. Now I'm gonna explain to you each one because most YouTubers and most sources don't usually explain how this works so instead I'll show you. This is very easy now a voltage is drawn here to 5 volts let's say 5 volts is drawn through these two inductors or we can call this inductor is the main inductor and this one is a feedback inductor two types of inductor here now when voltage is drawn from through the two inductors when current is running through here there will be an induced current in l1 which means l2 causes l1 to produce an induction current and that inducting current acts in opposing way which results in the opposing current produced right here and that induced current will oppose the current the original current flow you see when two coils are placed like this and if we alternate the current through l1 right here there will be voltage induced on the other side l2 that's because they're changing of magnetic field and yara 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 you may know it as a faraday's law or we can call it lenses law but we choose Faraday's law. This is ex exactly what happens on the other circuit that I showed you. So right here, when L2 causes L1 to produce its own current or its own voltage, the voltage starts to resist the incoming current from the original source. So this current eventually cancelling out, creating no current flowing inside the L1, which means I which goes to zero. There is no current inside this circuit. But if there is no current through, uh, flowing through L1, that causes a huge inrush current inside L2 because this side is blocked. So the only way it can go through is L2. So a huge amount of current is drawn through L1, I mean through L2, creating a spike in L2. And that spike that changing spike or that changing magnetic field or or that changing uh, current will create an induction current right here will create a voltage through l3 which is another lens flow so i hope this is clear by the way oh and uh, the well the duty of the npn transistor right here is it's for switching power it's it's used for switching and actually this concept is very important to understand how it works usually the youtubers don't or uh, any other source don't explain this but it's rather easy right right here now all we have to do is changing l1 and l2 and l3's inductance to create a desired amount of power or voltage okay guys i actually took time while doing this it was exhausting to be honest i'm not a another artist or a drawer okay but this will suffice now as you can see it here there's a transistor the transistor that i chose is tip122 because it's well easier to get and i used the resistor of 220 ohms and a diode u4007 and the rest is easy now the turns there's inductor one here and there's inductor two here 
Well, for me, I did the same amount of turns, each six turns, each six turns each, this one six turn and this one six turn. And well, that's connected to a core or a ferrite core and the other, the outside, well, you could do whatever you want, actually. You can turn, for example, this into 2000 turns or whatever, but you don't, you surely don't want uh, yourself to waste time winding this. So we're going to use a flyback transformer. Well, and that's connected to 5 voltage. I draw this easily because, well, sometimes people confuse of this transistor, the three-legged component. So it should be like this circuit. And i done it, so I'm going to show you guys what it looks like. Okay, this is the close-up look of my transformer that I designed. Okay, now as you can see here, I've connected TIP or this transistor. And connected to the three legs, this is the diode, the resistor, and connected to a wire. Well, I used a varnished wire, so it is thin and it can cool down when the current is over, over limits. And here they are connected, this is the negative and this is the positive. The positive is connected to a center tap, right here, if I can show you. Yeah, it's, it's connected anyway, it's connected to a center tap. Then it is mounted from a core, of course, the transformer coil, sorry, a transformer core, as you can see right here, connected to a flyback transformer. Well, the secondary is connected to the 8 pin. Well, you should count it like this, actually. The 8 pin, then finally the outlet and the ground. So we are connected, we expect a high voltage generator from it. So you can do it easily like this. It's a very simple component. And a, yeah, by the way, this is called a sink, a heat sink. It's used to absorb heat. Well, usually this kind of transistor heats usually rapidly. So we're going to use this and we're going to turn it on on a 5 volt, as I promised you people. Hmm? Okay, now let's connect it and see what will happen. Can you see the arc? It's very small actually. Let's try to expand it. Wow. Okay. Which means it's about... Maybe it's about half centimeter? Yeah. It's maybe half like centimeter or something. So it's if it's a half centimeter, well, according to the general well description of high voltage, thirty thousand volt should escape uh, around one centimeter. So if this is half centimeter, which means it's fifteen thousand volts. Ah, huh, not bad. Really cool. But this experiment, well, has its flaws actually. Well, I've been using it repeatedly now but the voltage starts to well to decrease you know and eventually stops i don't know why but but it has to do something with the well the transistor you see the transistor uh, actually switches current multiple times so it generates itself uh, heat so even if you when you touch this heat thing starts to get really warm really quickly so, which makes it very inefficient. We can't use it for extended period of time. Well, that's one flaw, and well, I don't see any other. So, yeah, when you must design or you must attach the transistor to a heatsink uh, to use it in longevity. Long, long, ah, I'm, beca I'm beginning to start longevity. Actually, I can't know the frequency it's oscillating because I don't have the tools, I don't have oscilloscope. Well, one day maybe I will. Well, that kind of frequency generates heat very rapidly. So, let's see if we can burn stuff with it. Ah, yes sir, it's... it's whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm done. <laughs> okay guys, uh, well, thanks for watching and I hope you understand or learn something from this video and and by the way this is not for children do not show it for children and it's not definitely recommended to try on your siblings to shock them just kidding anyway 
Uh, I hope you enjoy this. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment to anything you find intriguing. So I'll be seeing you next time.